So, today, we actually have someone that's traveled all over the world, a wonderful guy. I consider him my brother from another mother. He and I have been training together now for over three months. He's got an... Oh, wait for it. Wait for it. Uh -oh. Ooh! Uh-oh. Ooh! Bang! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he, he has a, he's made millions of dollars in real estate. He's owned numerous real estate companies. He started in his early 20s and retired at the age of 29. And now he owns he owns properties all over the world. And we have him here in the Bahamas and in our studio today. So everyone, I want to give it, I want to give a great applause to the one, the only, Angelo Ramora. Man, you got that. You, you got that right. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't butcher my name. What's going on, man? How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Man, now that I'm with you, yeah. I'm even better. Uh... <laughs> So, so as, as you all can probably tell, we have a good chemistry. We uh, we train together every day. Uh, he's gotten incredible results, but also he's such an astute businessman that I wanted to take a time to do a different type of video today, where basically we talk about success uh, and your life because I find mm -hmm. it very interesting, and I think a lot of other people would find it very interesting too. Yeah. And on top of that, I'm gonna I'm gonna be I'm gonna be putting in a link down below, a link to your YouTube channel, which is incredible. And you're going to see some of his intro videos as well as links to some of his real estate videos that can help you as a regular person uh, improve your financial lot in life. It's about selling it, taking your cash out, and going into another deal. You can make money anywhere as long as the numbers make sense. I'm rude, I'm raw, and I'm very intense. Don't be stupid. Nothing comes without sacrifice and hard work. I'm telling you that right now. So let's get started. Uh, where are you originally from? So originally from Australia. Um, you know, born born and bred there. But um, mm -hmm. my parents are Croatian. Uh -huh. So my mum and I, we kind of traveled back and forth quite often from, from Australia mm -hmm. to Croatia. Uh -huh. And um, it wasn't easy. You know what I mean? Because right. you're constantly changing your environment. You're, you're going from one school to another school, from one region to another region. Um, I used to get bullied a lot as a kid, you know, in, in Croatia, they used to think that I was this rich Australian kid. Right. Yeah. And then in Australia, they were like, you're this poor Croatian kid. So <laughs> shit, man, you can't right. win. You know what I mean? But right. all of that traveling and yeah. living in different countries, mm -hmm. you get to learn, first of all, multiple languages right um, and second of all different cultures how people think how people act um, wow. how people do you know and even though at the time it was very hard now looking uh -huh. back on my on my past and, and my life growing up you right know, it just made me the the man I am today I, I you know in a, in a world that is uh -huh. You know, it's not perfect. Right. I don't think it ever will be. Um, it's 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 a tough world out there, in my opinion. But it just makes me, I guess, understand people more. Okay. In in their in their various regions, their mm -hmm. various status levels and whatnot, just because I've kind of experienced mm -hmm. you know, the both continents and right. whatnot. So right. Yeah. Man, that's excellent. That's a long. That's a that's a that's a long. Where are you from? No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And that's what we look for. Okay, there's no point in like in like in like. I'm from Croatia. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, cool, man. So, so okay, so as a so so as a child growing up in Croatia, in, in Australia, and then then in Croatia. Yeah. Was it your dream to be in real estate, or what was your dream to actually be? So, mate, ever since I was like five years old, my dream was to be a professional soccer player. Okay. You know, and I worked very hard to, to accomplish that, you know, and, and I quit school at the age of 14 to accomplish that. So, you're looking at a guy here right now that's literally got no formal education whatsoever, um, you know. So, no high school diploma? No high school diploma. No high school degree? What's what's that? Yeah, I got the I got that I got the Harvard degree of mistakes, mate. That's what I've got. <laughs> um, no, none of that, mate. And you know, I always kind of like uh -huh. to joke on my own account. You know, when I when I type on a laptop, it looks like a Chinese chef making chop suey. It's, it's the most <laughs> ridiculous thing ever. But um, how, how do you do it? How do you do, how, how like do you, like this? That's how you type. Yeah, that's how. Wow. I type, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so okay, so you so you quit high school at. So you, you quit school. You quit school at the age of 14. fourteen. Yeah, and I became a professional soccer player at the age of eighteen. So it's a it's a dream come true, man. I can tell you right now, if the if the people watching and listening just want to Google the statistics of becoming a professional soccer player, it's the number one sport in the world. So I'm sorry to all of you NBA, NFL, and MLB supporters. Forget about it. You know, football or soccer, uh -huh. as it's called in the US, is by far the number one sport. So 
with everything that I've achieved in life, mate, even to this day, I can say that my number one achievement is becoming a professional soccer player. Even though it was only for six months, it's just because it was. it, it is so impossible right. to make this dream a, a reality. Uh -huh. And I was able to do it. And when I accomplish that, what else can I do? There's nothing that I can't do. You know what right. I mean? So right. that's why I think I've had a lot of success in, in other ventures and in other mm -hmm. things because of that initial you know, dream of becoming a professional soccer player. Wow. Yeah. So, so you, so you retire at the age of what? So I, I unfortunately decided to hang up the boots, you know, a couple of years after my first professional contract. And um, okay. the reason for that is I just didn't feel that. And what age was that? Uh, 19. You retired at 19? 19. 19, yeah. So, yeah. so, so you became a professional soccer player at what age? 18. A 18. Yeah. And retired by 19. Yeah, nine, I can't exactly remember, 19 and a half, 20 yeah. or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Look, reluctantly, Rob, I did yeah. it because, you know, I didn't feel that at the time um, I was going to achieve the success that I hoped for throughout my entire childhood. Um, you know, because think about it. When you're a professional soccer player, you've only got a 10 year lifespan right. to gain the, the status, the wealth and whatnot, because after that, you're kind of broken. You can't really move anymore. And look, I'm, I'm 32 years old now and I stopped playing when I was 19. I, I've broken my left wrist my pinky twice, my left leg twice. I mean, I had chronic right. back problems. So even now I'm like the rain, man. I can tell you when it's gonna rain. And by the way, there's a tropical <laughs> storm coming to the Bahamas tomorrow. I can feel it in my wrist, you know what I mean? Um, so, which, uh, and, and which is actually true. Which is true, right? Yeah. Now, that's because I Googled it. But anyway, yeah. so I'm kind of joking around a little bit. But um, yeah, so reluctantly decided to hang up the boots, but now, you know, fast forward uh, 13, 14 years or whatever, looking back, it was the right move. Uh -huh. You know, I'm 32, unofficially retired three years ago, um, and I don't think I would have been where I am today if I continued playing soccer. Wow. Yeah. So you retired, and did you meet with like a lot of success after you retired? Like, did you have like a bunch of money like, saved up and you know just live an easy life, and then decide to get into real estate or what? No. Well, that was retiring from professional sport. Okay. I didn't. I didn't. I mean, I had to go. To, I had no money. Like, you, you had know, no money? No, I had no money okay. because I didn't really have a great contract and it was just a short term stint. And I had to go work as a laborer to uh -huh. make ends meet. Right. Because where do you go when you've got no formal education, no degree, nothing? I mean, you get any, any shit kicking job that you can. Uh -huh. But um, I always, you know, when I was working as a, as a laborer on, on dirty construction sites in, in Sydney, Australia, I believed that there was something bigger and better out there for me and, and I, I was always thinking to myself okay how can i make my money work for me right instead of me working for it right and then you kind of catch the bug right the bug of real estate business right. entrepreneurship finance stocks right dividends rent right. royalties <laughs> business income right and now you replace this passion that you've got for sport your eight soccer, things, yeah and i've replaced it with uh, i was obsessed with anything and everything business finance related right really so okay. i went down that path a lot of personal development a lot of books a lot of seminars a lot of talking to other people that are where i want to be and one thing leads to another mate and I, and I kind of slowly started buying houses and investing in real estate when i was 22. really and that's when i started yeah in australia okay so, so you started investing in, in, in Australia. Yeah. And then for some reason you moved to the United States. Why is that? Yeah. So look, um, this was 2012, 2013, right? Um, well actually 2011 when the U S market first kind of came across my desk, we just went through the global financial crisis of 2008. Gotcha. Real estate was at all time lows, like right. you know, ridiculous prices. Um, the Australian dollar was one for one with the American dollar. So it was a really? perfect storm as that, as I like to refer to it, you know, to kind of jump ship, move abroad and start my journey of investing in real estate and right. um, building financial freedom through passive income with, with property. And, um, I, I mean, yeah, man, I just did it. You know, I just, I left everything and everyone behind in Australia. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't really have too much money at the time. I made a lot of bad mistakes when I first started my real estate investment journey in Australia. Okay. Bought a lot of very expensive properties, got into a lot of debt. So I didn't, I, I moved to the US with 15 grand. Wow. That's okay. it. And $1.3 million in debt. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, I made a lot of, don't even go there. 1.3 million. Wow. <clears throat> made a lot of bad moves, right? I was yeah. young and dumb. And you don't know what you don't know. But I quickly kind of, you know, woke up and smelt the roses and, and I just um, decided to take the plunge and I moved to the US uh -huh. in late 2012. Okay. And initially kind of got off the boat as I right. like to joke around in, in Kansas City and bought my first house there, flipped it, uh -huh. made a fat profit, and I was like, damn, 
what's going on in this country, mate? This is the place to be. How long did it take you like to buy a house and then flip it? It didn't take me too long, mate, because I already put in the legwork beforehand. You know, okay. I was really a real, I was already a real estate investor in, in Australia. Right. I had the experience. I've kind of had the knowledge. The way of doing business and the terminology and the transactions is different in the U.S., but the fundamentals of business yeah. are pretty much the same. And what are those? Um, you put me on the spot here. Yeah. Uh, fundamentals, yeah. uh, couple. So, so, something couple. couple. I mean, okay, right, let's talk about. Well, number one rule in business is is uh, Always, um, well, not necessarily the number one rule in business, but um, and we spoke about this before. Yeah. Um, you control the expenses. Okay. You don't. You don't control your income. Okay. So your job as a business owner is to always focus on minimizing expenses and maximizing profit. Okay. Okay. So you always have to make sure that you're firing on all cylinders when it comes to sales to try right. and generate as much profit as you can and minimize your costs. Right. right? Um, so that's, I guess, uh, one of the key fundamentals. Uh, you make money when you buy, not when you sell. Could okay. be another key fundamental. So people think, oh, I make money when I sell a house. Wrong. You right. make money when you buy a house, so meaning you have to buy it very cheap. You have to negotiate really well. Right. So as long as you're buying a property cheap enough, right. you're going to make money on the sale. If you pay too much for the property, right. you're not going to make that much money. Right. Ah. So these are some, off the top of my head, some key fundamentals when it comes to business and real estate investing, where it doesn't matter where you are, uh -huh. what market, right. what you're doing, right. the fundamentals are the same. Australia. Uh -huh. US, Bahamas, yeah. it's the same. If you buy cheap, you'll make money. Right. If you pay too much for the property, you've ever paid, you won't make any money, for right. example, okay? Um, yeah. Okay, great. All right, so so how long did it take you to actually flip the house once you bought it? Flip the house, that's right. Um, I can't recall. It was it was the first one uh -huh. that I've done, but I really can't recall because I've done under, so many and we'll under touch a month? on. Oh yeah, under a month, for sure. But again, I've had the yeah. experience and, and I, built, I built the team uh -huh. While I was still in, in Australia. So I already had the connections and the relationships. So I built the feet on the ground. Okay. So when I initially moved to the US, uh -huh. it was already kind of a, a done deal per se. I, I, already had, I already had the flow, all right? We're already in the, in the, in the motion of, of business. So, so you already created like, a, like maybe like a dream team? Somewhat. Okay. Yeah, I already had people that I've already built the relationship with and we kind of knew what we were going to be doing, how we were going to be doing it and whatnot. So when I kind of already moved there, it was already, the business has already started per se, right. right? So it didn't take too long to flip the first property, but I was mesmerized with um, the, the the profit. Mm. Um, and I was like, yeah, this is this is the place to be. Wow. So, And so how long were you in Kansas City before you moved to? Year and a half. Okay, year and a half. Yeah, and then so, I moved to Ohio. Okay. Yeah. So why Ohio? Um, You know, living in Kansas City for a year and a half kind of gave me a lot of, um, insight into uh -huh. the various real estate markets in the US um, because you know when when you you know you know the saying when you make a passion and obsession you'll never work a day in your life right right, right. so I kind of made real estate a big passion mm -hmm. of course ever since I kind of stopped playing playing soccer and I was in Kansas City for a year and a half so I made my whole world evolve around real estate and right. I researched a lot of the markets in the US and I studied a lot of the markets in the US and I bought property in a lot of the markets in the US and then when I found out about this weird freaking city and I dude I don't know what Toledo was or Ohio I mean uh -huh. shit man when I was in, in, in Australia uh -huh. I had no clue where Ohio was or Toledo <laughs> right but I was networking right your network equals your net worth so you need a network wait, with a lot of people wait, wait say that again your network equals your net worth okay wow. so the more people you know the more hands you shake the more babies you kiss like a president that you will expand your, your net worth it's as simple as that so I was um yeah right uh -huh. we should charge them for that one yeah um so where was I, mate? Um, so basically, you're talking about how being in Ohio. Yeah, stumbled across Toledo. Uh -huh. Went to Toledo. Yes. Checked out the market, and I was like, "Damn, this is unbelievable." So what I was seeing in Toledo is I was seeing good quality areas uh -huh. with good quality people living in these areas, property selling for very, very, very cheap, rents being res respectively high, uh -huh. and a, and an after repair value of the property allowing a huge profit margin. I was like, there's something wrong. How is this possible? It's too good to be true. Uh -huh. And it was, the reason for that is, is because Toledo is not a sexy city. Right. You know, LeBron James goes to Cleveland right. and now everyone starts buying property in Cleveland or Columbus right. or Cincinnati. These right. are the known cities in Ohio. Right. Toledo is not. So it's kind of one of those hidden gems. It stays under the radar because it's not a sexy name. So that's why there was still a lot of opportunity there. Even to this day, there's mm -hmm. still a lot of opportunity there. Even to this day, I'm still buying the same deals that I was when I first started my business. So it just, it was an absolute no brainer 
from a market timing standpoint, from a profit margin standpoint, from a cash flow standpoint, and from the business that I wanted to create to move to Toledo, Ohio and start my company. Wow. And we and then, you know, a year and a half later, Move from you while I was in Kansas City for a year and a half. Moved there, been in, in Toledo, Ohio ever since. And you know, from that first property that we bought, fixed and renovated in um in Kansas City, I stopped counting at a thousand. Really? Yeah, we stopped like that's a couple of years ago. So we've easily bought, renovated, and sold thousands of properties, man. I don't even know how many. We stopped counting. And at and and at some point, you actually had the largest company in Toledo. Um, yeah, I mean, we've always been the biggest single family home buyer in Toledo. I think we're the biggest real estate investment company in town. Yeah, we've always been that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, not always, but you know, yeah. we kind of, within, again, it's within, not a big city, you know what I mean? So it's not really that hard to be the biggest. Within a year. The, the biggest the biggest fish in the smallest pond, you know right, what I mean? Right, 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 right. <laughs> and, and you know, and, and, just, and just like a little side note, you know, I love, I love the state of Ohio because originally I was born in Columbus, Ohio, so I'm originally a Buckeye. You know, it's also the home of the Arnold Classic. Uh, yeah, bodybuilding guy. Yep. And and then also, um, I went to school uh, at, at at one point in my life. You know, from the age of nine to ten. You know, in in Shaker Heights, Ohio. You know, or you know, so Cleveland. So there you go. Yeah, I went to Lomond High School. You know. There anyway, you go, I digress. But it's so, a good it's a good market for real estate investment purposes. Yeah. Even to this day, when the market has appreciated all around the country, in uh -huh. the Midwest especially, Michigan, mm -hmm. Ohio, and Indiana. There's a lot of good opportunities there. Wow, you used to live in Indiana too. Yeah. So, from here, right? So, so okay. So, let fill me in, right? So, you you were you were there from the age of say 24. Mm -hmm. All right. So from 24 to 29, mm -hmm. five years. Mm -hmm. And at 29, you say, you know what? I I'm kind of done with this. I made mm -hmm. enough. I'm retiring. Tell me, what type of hard work did you do to make sure that in five years you could retire? You know, what, tell, yeah, tell me what yeah. a typical day would be for you. Yeah, yeah. What time would you wake yeah. up? 5.30. Okay. And yeah. then, and then, and then what would you have, like, to eat or drink or whatever? Ah, shit, man. I can't remember. I didn't eat anything. I would literally mix Red Bull with coffee just to get through the day. So that's what I was drinking all day long. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. Eating was a waste of time. Pooping was a waste of time. Peeing was a waste of time. It was all a waste of time to me. If I could not eat, poop, or pee, I'd hold it all in for as long as I could. I just wanted to work. Really? Yeah, man. Yeah. So, yeah. so now, so here's something you shared with me. Now you bought the building mm -hmm. that your office was in. Yeah. Because you said you said you don't want to pay rent, so you just bought the building. Bought the building and converted the basement into a full blown condo. Uh huh. So I can tell you right now, there wasn't anyone more efficient than me when it comes to banging out the job and working. I mean, I wake up, basement, go up to my office, mm -hmm. work. When I finish the day, go down, sleep, and do it again. Groundhog day every single day, man. So, wow. So, so you're the first person in the office, last person to leave. Always. That's the All way right. it goes. The okay. shopkeeper opens up the store and closes the store, right? Hey, there you go. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it takes it takes it takes many 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 years and some really good second, third, and fourth in charge for, uh -huh. in, in charge to build a business where it's sustainable and self sufficient. Right. No longer we found you there. Something that we've kind of done a pretty good job at, yeah. I guess, to this point, because you know I'm not in the office day to day all day and every day, and it and it is running and 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 we still are operating and we're right. still profitable and and our investors are still very well looked after. But we're not shooting for any records anymore. Right. I'm not chasing the next sale or the next profit or the next, you know, Inc. 5000 list. I don't care about it. I mean, I've, I've come full circle in life, mm -hmm. mate, when it right. comes to success, money, status, ego, cars, holiday homes, mm -hmm. planes and all of that crap. And, you know, the conclusion that I've come to is it might sound weird to a lot of people, but it's mm -hmm. not worth it. And everyone's there. Everyone listening right now is probably going to be like, oh. How's that possible? And all I can say is wait till you get there. Yeah. Then give me a call and you'll be like, you were right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not not really made out to be what it seems like. So, so okay. So, so you mentioned cars and planes. Yeah. So I'm going to also put a link in the description down below to one of your one of your commercials where it shows yeah. that you have, a, you have a plane, yeah. you know, Dingo Air. And then also you have a, a Ferrari. Yeah, I sold well. it. Sold yeah, it you, all, you, man. you sold the Ferrari. You sold the plane. Sold it. Sold it. Sold all right. It. You, do you still have your Porsche? Still got the Porsche. <laughs> uh, so you know, you know what Tom Cruise says <laughs> what in risky say? business? Wait, wait. Porsche. There, there is no, no substitute. substitute. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. No, mate, that's the first kind of sports car that I bought. It was a very impulse buy. Uh huh. You know, uh -huh. Dominique and I, we went looking for a for a family car, and uh -huh. I just kept. I didn't move from this Porsche, and she was like, "All right, forget about the family car. We drive away with the Porsche." Really? So for years. I'm driving, Dominique's my passenger, and Jay's sitting in her lap. We've been yeah. driving illegally. Sorry, Ohio cops. We're, <laughs> we're, shit, man. We, the little two-seater Boxster. Yeah. Like, best, best car ever, dude. I still have it to this day. And it's in Italy right now. I love it, man. I, yeah. I just I can't explain to you how much I love it. It's quick. It's, 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 uh, oh, the, the, the turning radius is like nothing. It's just it's an awesome car. My baby. All right. So, so we will do probably a, uh, a video on Porsches as well. Okay, <laughs> so um, I actually know the history of Porsche as well. Yeah, I'm a yeah. historian, everybody. So now from here, okay, so so now 29, you, you, you've semi-retired or pretty much retired a lot. You yeah. know, the business is still running. So, you know, you go there to check on it, but you're not doing the daily operations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and you mentioned Italy. Now, yeah. what, what are your goals? Like, like literally, okay, so you travel all over the world. You have houses all over the world, yeah. Japan, uh, the Bahamas, yeah. States. Yeah. And Italy too, right? No, not in Italy. Not, not in Italy. Okay. Croatia. Croatia. Yeah. Croatia. Yeah. And do you speak? Do you speak the yeah, language in Croatia? Okay. Absolutely. So, yeah. so what language do you speak in Croatia? Croatian. Croatian. All yeah. right. All right. So, if you were to say, uh, "Hello, audience," how would you say that? Dobar dan. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All Thanks right. Good day. Good day. Good day. Yeah. All right. So, so okay. So in Italy, what do you want to do there? In Italy, yeah, so look, 29, I'm 32 now, but uh -huh. 29, I was like, okay, you know, what's, <clears throat> what is success? Uh -huh. What is success in life? And I came to the conclusion it's not making money. Right. And it's not, you know, putting your, your face on the front cover of a magazine and, and, and whatnot. It's, it's, the conclusion that I've come to is success is happiness. So how can you feel happy, fulfilled uh -huh. in, a, in a constant state of, joy, right. satisfaction, right. achievement, right. fulfillment again and happiness. Right. So how do we get to that? You know, now right. I truly believe that, you know, chasing the dollar is not true success. Right. Um, I, you know, I really believe that the, the happiness component is what true success is. Now, if that means that you run a billion dollar company uh -huh. and running that billion dollar company, working 15 hours a day makes you happy, right. you're successful. Right. If that means being a broke painter, Right. Painting some crappy artwork that no one wants to buy. Right. But when you're painting, you're happy and yeah. you make no money. Right. You're successful also. Right. The same as that billion dollar guy is. Wow. So that's kind of what I'm searching for. I'm okay. searching for what makes me happy mm -hmm. every single day. And I want to do it for the rest of my life. Okay. Without it being dependent on how much money I make. I just want okay. it to make me happy. So right. um, that's kind of where I'm at right now, mate. Um, you know, I'm kind of going back into my roots of, of, of playing soccer. Okay. Um, I'm digging, I'm digging that, that hole <laughs> per se. <laughs> and, um, you know, I've been in Italy for six months uh -huh. and, uh, I've, 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 you know, met a lot of amazing people. I've, again, your network equals your net worth. So I've networked with some of the greatest people in the world of, of football or soccer. Uh -huh. And I guess the, 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 the goal and the vision there is to, is to, you know, buy a football club, a lower division football club in, mm -hmm. in Italy and, and take it take it through the ranks now right. here's another thing too i have achieved i've, I've set so many goals and targets yes. throughout my throughout my life that i've achieved and every single time you achieve you work hard you achieve the goal and then when you achieve it you're like okay now what right. now what now right. what and you're constantly looking for that next fix it's never good enough more bigger car bigger house better more money more profit right higher higher ranking on the inc 5000 list it's just it, you get caught up in this cycle bullshit of okay. cycle of bullshit rob and what it should be, what I'm looking for now is an endless journey. A journey mm -hmm. with no destination. I don't want to reach any destination. Right. I want to be on an endless journey that makes me happy every single day. Wow. And that's success. Because if you find something you love doing and you get to do it every single day until the lights turn out, mm -hmm. you're a successful man or woman. Mm -hmm. There's no goals. Well, you know what the goal is? Death. Mm. The goal is death because yes, you're going to die. Right. So everyone listening you need to find something that you love doing and if you're truly happy from your heart soul being every cell in your body is truly happy doing whatever it is that you're doing right forget about everything else that is true success in life it's true success yeah okay so now you've written a book 
Oh, okay. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, so, so let's let's talk about this. So you, you've written a book. I've gotten yeah. a manuscript. It's really yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, the cover is interesting yeah. and good. Uh, <laughs> but some of the chapters are, are pretty uh, provocative. Yeah. 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 A yeah. little sizzlish. Oh, baby. You know, so it's so, not just sizzlish. It's burning, man. <laughs> it's can, burning. Can, can you share with the audience like some of the chapters and, oh, yeah. and the name of the book and, and what yeah. it's all about? So. My life's work, the book is called The Raw Truth to Success in Real Estate. Okay. By far the most provocative and controversial real estate book ever written. Okay. Um, I know all of the other authors of all of the other real estate books and they're all dilly dally vanilla bullshit, something for nothing, right? Everyone right. likes to sell uh, the public on an on a easy dream, an overnight success. Right. You know, uh, uh, you know have, take this pill and, and you'll be rich tomorrow. It doesn't work like that, mate. Right. That's that's not how life works. That's not how business works. That's not how anything works. Right. Whatever whatever is good uh -huh. takes time, takes sacrifice, and it takes a lot of hard work. Right. Right. So my my book talks about just the reality of 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 succeeding in real estate and in business and mm -hmm. and in life in general. Right. Um. It's very straightforward, to the point, cutthroat, easy to understand, hands on advice. Some of the chapters. Um, Stop being a lazy asshole. Why the American dream is dead. Mm. Cash is king. Wow. Cash flow is queen. Wow. Leverage is for peasants. Wow. How to negotiate like a pimp. How to flip like a porn star. Um, don't screw with Uncle Sam. Uh huh. Why you should tell your family and friends to f off. Wow. Um, why most realtors suck. Uh huh. Why building inspectors and appraisers are bullshit artists. Wow. And so on. So wow, very so attention grabbing. I kind of go after every specific niche in the real estate industry, and and I kind of kick them up the ass. So so let me ask you this, right? So if you had this book, yeah, okay, this, all right. In addition to this book, what all would you need to become a millionaire? Like if you started from scratch, yeah. like 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 nothing. I told you this the other day. Yeah. Okay. So so Lily, watch this. Um, okay. So what I like to do is I like to ask, ask all my guests if you if everything was taken away from you. With the base of knowledge that you have, and say a cell phone, yeah, and five hundred dollars, yeah, how long would it take you to become a millionaire? It's different now. Uh -huh. Remember, because I've got I've got the experience, I've got the contacts, I've got yeah. the, I've got the resources. So I think I could recover very quickly. I don't know how long it would take me to become a millionaire, but it wouldn't be long. Um, because again, I've got the I've got the resources, so it's different. Mm -hmm. look, at, look at Donald Trump, for example. You know what I mean? He was yeah. what a billion dollars in debt. Nine billion in debt. There you go. But he recovered very quickly because he was able to renegotiate with the banks, and he had the yeah. right resources. And boom, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. In a year, he was back, right? right. So, um, if you all right, so ultimately, so, mate, yeah. I mean, look, could you be a millionaire in say under six months? No, it takes a bit. It takes a little bit longer than that. I mean, you can't. If if you can, you'd have to make very risky moves. Right. Right. The the shorter your time frame, the higher risk. The longer yeah. your time frame, the lower risk. Okay. Okay. So if and it looks low and steady wins the race. Right. Remember what we spoke about. Right. If you train for thirty hours, uh -huh. you train for thirty hours in one hit. Yeah. What's better, training for thirty hours in one hit or one hour for the next thirty days? One hour for the next thirty days. There you go. Because the thirty hours in one hit, you'll probably be dead. You know what I mean? So. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but um. Anyway, no, so just going back to your, 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 your kind of a question. So all you need is, uh -huh. is uh, access to a computer. Uh -huh. Set yourself up with a Wix website. Right. Compose the content, a vision for your business, what you want to be doing. Right. Set up a way for people to contact you, to message you. Right. Get an autoresponder series going on MailChimp. Capture people's details on MailChimp and start nurturing your audience. Start giving right. them something valuable. Start collaborating with them and start selling them something. Wow. Your services, your product or whatever it is. I mean, and honestly, mate, you know, people ask me, how do you get to where you are? How do you achieve the success that you have? And I told you this yesterday mm -hmm. or the couple of days ago. Wake up at 5.30. Yeah. Sit your ass in an office at 6 and don't leave until 7. And do that every single day. And then people are like, oh, what do I do, Dingo? Nothing, just sit there. And we're not talking from 6 till 7, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. No, 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 7 p.m. Minimum. Right. You're looking at 12 hours, 11, 12 hours a day, well, six days a week. Right that's 13 hours. There you go. 12 hours minimum, 11, 12 hours minimum. Right. What do I do when I'm sitting down? I don't know. You'll figure it out. Every day, sit in the same place. Don't move. Go pee-pee. Go poo-poo. Do a little food food and sit there and you'll right. figure it out. If you have an idea of what it is that you want. I want to sell products. I want to do sell a service. I want to start this business. You're right. Sit there every single day, 
week after week, month after month, year after year, and one thing will lead to another. Bit by bit by bit by bit by bit, before you know it, you've got a company, you're making money, you're generating revenue. That's all it comes down to. Here's the problem, Rob. What? Out of thousands of people that I've spoken to over the last 10 years, you know how many people are willing to do that? How many? None. You know who did it? Me. That's why I am where I am today, because I sit my ass from 6 till 7 p.m. And no one else is willing to do it. That's the, that's the thing, man. Yeah. That's the thing. There's no magic. Right. It's hard work. And you got to do it every single day. So, okay. So now, so you're semi-retired. Yeah. You know, you have a place in the Bahamas because that's how we're turning. Yeah. Um, wait, you, wait, 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 wait. Uh-oh. 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 Stop. 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 Okay. Uh, all right. Don't, don't, don't cause me to flex here. That's I mean, a, I that's a, I mean, well, I'm thinking about popping the shirt open. Uh, it's not that. I mean, you've got more size, but I've got more cut. I'm sorry. I mean, look, it's let me see. You know, yeah, you're not, man. I'm, dude. No way. I'm more cut than Big Rob. Yeah. Hold on. And you got to Yeah. Oh, but, stop it. <laughs> wait. Hold stop, on. Wait. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, there you go. There you go. I hold can't on. wiggle it, hold man. On, hold on. Right. There you go. Thank you. But uh, <laughs> but yeah yeah no. Uh, and, and by the way, I'm not a short person. Okay. I'm five ten, and I weigh two hundred and fifty four pounds. Okay, so Man. yeah, yeah, it's it's a lot of muscle here. That's gonna be in the in the big butt, huh? It, well, I mean, amongst amongst other but yeah. amongst other large body parts. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Ah, I mean, I mean, okay. I'm gonna yeah, yeah. flex. And... That's a that's a separate that's a separate type of video. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, and but but he's actually six foot three. Yeah. Okay. So so he and then he has some massive legs because oh, he's a former man. soccer player. All three of my legs are massive. I mean. um <laughs> yes. What? The, yeah. Massive yeah. legs. Former soccer so, player. Big. Qu- yeah. So. 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 Basically. So. And this. And this is. You. You will catch this type of unbridled reaction, uh, all the time when you hang around him. And if you check out his YouTube channel, unbridled. What does that mean? Yeah, it, it means basically, um, uh, no holes barred. Anything can happen. Uh, oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're not. We're, you're not. You're not being. Com- you're not being comprised. You're just being open. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. It's the 21st yeah, century, yeah, man. Yeah. So, Shit. unbridled. Yeah, open. I like that. I'm going to use that in my vocabulary. There you go. Yeah, because I'm missing a lot. You know? it, it's, it, hold on. Yeah, I like the word F-bomb. Yeah, you Not know, F-bomb, but you know which word. I don't you know. Want, what, I don't you know what, I mean, you yeah. might be missing a vocabulary, right? But you're adding it with the zeros on the bank account. That's all that matters. Woo! You know? Drop the mic. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so now let me ask you this, right? Go ahead. You know, because, because I don't want to get too far off because I can talk to you forever. Yeah. Uh, you have a wonderful personality. And this is, this is the real him. Tell me about some of the some of the places that you that you advertise on that, that you market yourself or or, or, or market your, your companies. Uh, man, uh, I guess the number one number one platform for us has been Bigger Pockets. Okay, and that's a and what is that? Real estate investing forum. You okay. know, over a million real estate investors on there, and, and everyone. I mean, I everyone that wants to invest in real estate, I encourage you to jump on the forum. It's free. Uh-huh. And there's just a wealth of knowledge to be gained from the forum, and, and it's you can ask questions, you can contribute. It's a great place. Okay. Um, I mean, YouTube, Facebook, speaking engagements, seminars, podcasts. I mean, you name it. You know what I right. mean? You got to cast a wide net, and then you've got the biggest chance to catch the most fish. So, we kind of we promoted our business everywhere, uh-huh. and you need to be very loud and proud with your brand. You know, mm-hmm. you just need to be all over the shop. And I'm I'm a very eccentric type guy. If you haven't if you haven't noticed right um, and you know being in a being a, a ridiculously good-looking man like I am with this <laughs> ridiculously sexy accent three big fat legs abs yeah. now you know we, we're getting there we're getting there uh-huh. you know in, a, in the US people Sh- love crocodile Dundee they love Australians Sh- I mean, show, show the abs show the abs I, I want you to know that this is what we built Shit, this is what we built man. really okay. yeah I mean just oh, all right just I'm pointing this out there see this, uh, look at that shit man <laughs> Okay, that wasn't there. That was not there uh, two and a half months ago. That's okay. not bad, man. Yeah. That yeah. Indian guy's got nothing on me, mate. Yeah. What's his name? Kalal? Kalal. No, you know, the, 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 the guy that kind of did the whole... Oh, yeah. you're talking about the guy that, that's in... Um, yeah. Namar- he, he, he's from... Um, he was on, a, he was on a Silicon Valley, the, the movie. I mean, whatever the, whatever the, your the name TV is, show, mate. TV show, Silicon Valley. Yeah, there I'm, you go. I'm gonna put a picture of him next. Yeah. So he's, check this out. He's got nothing on the dingo. No, he's still not. He's he's okay. He did well. Good. Yeah. He did well, but yeah, that's okay. We're we're going after Chris Hemsworth for now, right? Yeah. Yes. I think yes. McConaughey. He's done. Yeah. Yeah. So our original goal was for him to to be as good as Matthew McConaughey, as you'll see. And I'm 
put a comparison now. And um, so now that we've actually surpassed Matthew McConaughey, we've 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 surpassed the guy that uh, was in the show Silicon Valley. Close. I don't yeah. know. He's got a little bit more size, but maybe Dingo's more cut. Right. And we'll think about. It. We can right. maybe ask the audience to to tell us what they think. Right. right. Hey, audience, who should we go for? Right. Who's next? I'm thinking Chris Hemsworth, but man, he's got some size. That guy. He's a pumper. Yeah. Almost almost like you. Yeah. Um, yeah. almost, well, not right. from a yeah. size yeah. standpoint, but like a pump, you know? Right, 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 it, man. right, right. He, he has a good workout. Yeah, good that's workout. what I'm saying. Yeah, he yeah. has yeah. good physique. You know, I mean, I'm not anyone could be Thor. I mean, I mean, you and I yeah. could. You know, I mean, I mean, you could be Thor, and I could be, and I could be the guy that that, that actually holds the Thor. <laughs> you know. But Edris Alba, you know, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. people have kind of said that he and I kind of look like twins. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. But, um, so, all right then. So, on the last part, because I know you're a busy man. Uh, just two basic more questions. What is a typical day for you now, okay, in, in retirement? Yeah. So, typical, so, yeah. Typical day for me now, man, is, mm -hmm. is all about, so my goal is to advance in these, one of these three, well, actually all three ways every single day, spiritually, intellectually, and physically. Right. Okay. So, as you know, we train long, we train hard, we've got a very rigorous diet regime. So, 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 so you wake up at what time? What do we wake up? 6.15. Okay, then what okay, do you We drink some water. Okay. We go for, for a 20 minute walk. Okay. Before that, we used to do the, the 10 minutes of, of hip cardio with the skipping and whatnot. Uh -huh. um, then we go drink our protein shake. Okay. Um, oh, by the way, we do gratitude every single morning when we wake up for 20 minutes. We, right. we thank God and... and, 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 and Allah and Buddha and whoever you believe in. <laughs> when he says we, he means yeah. him. He means him. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. But you're no, part you, of the team. Right, you right, know what okay. I mean? All right. And then, um, you know, then we've got we train at eight a.m. We go very hard for an hour. Uh -huh. Get home, um, eat, of course. We've right. Got the, once again, the diet, the regime, strict regime, meditation for thirty minutes, and then we kind of get into the into the study. Um, Greek, what do you study? Greek philosophy. Okay. Do a lot of reading. Of philosophy in general. Um, mm -hmm. We we read. I read a lot. Um, uh, anything will go like I just finished um, how to pick stocks like Warren Buffett value investing by Benjamin Graham conversations with God one two and three I'm reading now Viktor Frankl a man's search for meaning start with why Simon Sinek just some of the books that I've read the alchemist so you know doing a lot of reading doing a lot of research doing a lot of study still touch base with business two to three hours a day make sure everything's running smoothly there I'm still doing a lot about around my book. Finish the manuscript, the front cover, okay. book website, making sure we're setting up um, paid ads for the for the book advertising. So I'm pretty busy with the with the book. Right. Um, what else? Still kind of passively working on the business plan for for taking over the football club. Okay. Um, then we eat. Then mm -hmm. we train again. I mean, afternoon right. we've got more cardio. We've got more walking, more running. Right. Um, stretching in the evenings, but I would say I kind of wrap up my day. Mm -hmm around 4 or 5 p.m. is when I kind of wrap up my day from all of the training, all of the exercise, all of the reading, the meditation, the business, the study. Wow. So it's still a very... Full day. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's it, still a very full day. Yeah, you know? it's jam-packed. Yeah, but it's a, it's a different kind of full. It's a better kind of full. Right. It's a more fulfilling it's, kind of full. It's everything you want. Yeah, no, well, it's kind of, man. I mean, kind of. I mean, you know, I, I, I already told you this, man. I don't, I don't like working out. I don't like kind of starving myself but without that there's no result yeah forget about it i mean if you want if you want the result sometimes you have to do things that you don't really like doing you know but you'll get the result now you have to ask yourself is the result worth the pain You're right and if it is then the answer is simple then you're going to do it you know what i mean but to be honest with you mate what i'd love to do all day and every day is eat chocolate drink and have sex like <laughs> but is that sustainable is that the right thing to do you know stoicism maybe, maybe the sex yeah, right? You know, stoicism <laughs> teaches us we need to make decisions from a higher moral standard, you okay, know? So okay. you always have to do the right thing. And, and, right. and um, yeah, look, my, my, days are, my days are still very busy, but it's a different kind of busy, and it's a, it's a more sustainable kind of busy. Well, you know, I, I notice this right here. So I, 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 I do a lot of, I watch a lot of documentaries, mm -hmm. and I do some reading, not as much as you, when I need to do more. Mm -hmm. uh, but I noticed that the one thing in common that you have that Warren Buffett has you both are you both read for about five to eight hours a day. 
I wouldn't say I read that much because, well, then again, I don't know how much I actually read from the articles and email standpoint because right. it's right. constantly some kind of article that I'm reading. Because that's what he does. He does a bunch yeah. of different articles. Yeah, but from like the books, I'll probably get in, I'd say, an hour's worth of reading every day. Well, yeah, but... From the book, like a, like a just right. a classic kind of book, book, book. He doesn't do a classic book. He, he yeah. does like he does like different reports and things like that. But well, Bill reads. Gates reads an hour and a half every evening. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes. like know. actual book, right? Actual right. Book. Okay. So so you're actually in alignment with them because you're proving that it isn't so much a degree that makes you successful. It's your work ethic combined with learning more every day. Man, a degree is nothing. Right. It's a waste of money. Right. Wow. Wow. It's a waste of money. Yeah. Sure. I mean, if you think about it. It, if, if, you you think, a, if you want to be an entrepreneur, it is a waste of money. Well, if you want to be a doctor, different story. Right. Okay. If you want to be an attorney, different story. You, right. need, you do need a degree, but right. man, I did a research somewhere. You know, first of all, it's almost impossible to get into Harvard unless your daddy is someone. Okay. So uh-huh. you, net, net, number one, number two, you need to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars every single year in tuition. Wow. Okay. So by the time you're finished, you're already in the hole. God knows how much, unless your daddy paid for it. Right. Um, number one, number two. By the time you finish your master's degree or whatever, you're 32 years old. Mm-hmm. I'm 32 now, by the way. Right. You, you're so much in debt, and then you just start your journey as a Harvard degree attorney at some law firm. Everyone will hire you, by the way, but they're going to pay you a couple hundred grand mm-hmm. for a year. Right. I'm sorry to blow wind up my ass, but that's a good month for us. Right. Sometimes. Okay. Okay. Before, back in the day. Okay. And then by the time you reach partner status. Right. Or whatever it is, you're 40 years old. Right. You've dealt with all of the corporate disgusting bullshit in the wonderful world of American finance or American corporate. Right. You're making good money. You're 40 years old. Dude, didn't go unofficially retire when he was 29. Right. No degree, no education, no debt. I right. can hardly write. I can hardly read. Man, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Just sit your ass in the desk and don't leave from 6 a.m. till 7 p.m. If you want a fancy degree on your portfolio, then go to Harvard, wait till you're 32 and you'll make a lot of money, you'll have a degree, but I don't know. I, yeah, I, I didn't yeah. want to go down that path, so whatever. You know, let me tell you, right? Each of their own. Yeah, I, I went down that path. And, yeah. you know, I got my degree from Fisk University, graduated magna cum laude, you know, certified as a personal trainer, cardiac so trainer, medical exercise therapist. I, um, knew, I always knew you were a magna. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, uh. Like I'm a Kaliber. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a little behind the scenes joke. Yeah, yeah. And and you know, so, so I, and I got all the certific- certifications, but here's the thing. I actually work for him, you know, and you know, so You're not you're not the only one, mate. <laughs> Shit. You know what 50 Cent said? What? I don't have a I don't have a Harvard degree, but the guys working for me do. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so you know, so but uh this has been this has been very interesting. I have loved this interview as always. And so, is what's the last piece of advice you want to give anyone out there to like be a success? You know, if you could do like, if you give like two pieces of advice or three pieces yeah, of advice, yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in parting, in parting, forget about what anyone else is saying. Uh huh. It doesn't really matter because right. it's just an opinion. Um, wow. And there are many opinions out there, right? There's always going to be an opinion out there. Right. What you need to do. This is the conclusion that I've come to coming full circle in life, in my opinion, is find what it is that makes you happy, mm-hmm. truly happy, and do that every single day. Right. And doesn't matter what anyone else says, right. what they think about it, right. if that is true happiness for you, right. then do that every single day. Right. If you make money, great. If you don't make money, it doesn't matter. Uh-huh. What I've found is that when you're passionate about something and you love what you do and you're happy doing it, money always follows. Wow. You just got to stick with it. Wow. Okay? okay. And that's the, I think that's the, that's the, that's the goal. That should be everyone's goal in life. It's an endless journey. You wake mm-hmm. up every day, you do something you love. There's no end goal. There's no destination. You don't mm-hmm. reach any kind of pinnacle. You reach death. Right. We all die. Right. And when you die, there is no more. Wow. We go to the afterlife. So be happy. I'm looking for it. I'm searching for it. And I, I can't wait to find it. And I want that endless journey and I want to do it every single day. And I want it to make me happy. And that's my endless journey. Right. Peace. Great. So, excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, if, so, if someone wants to contact you, how do they do that? Indian smoke signal. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm going to put your no, contact no. in. Yeah. Google. Google my name. Go- Google. Shit, all right. All right. So, what I'll do is I should put uh, his contact information and in the link down below where you can actually purchase his book. 
Uh, check out his, uh, his his blogs on Bigger Pockets as well. I'll put a link there as well. And I'll also put a link to his YouTube channel, uh, which is called Ohio Cashflow. Yeah. All right. Yeah, there's a lot of links. If you can't afford the book, send me a private email. I'll happily send you one for free. If you don't like the book and you bought it, burn it. Send me a video of it, burn it, and I'll pay you back. Wow. It's a great book. I haven't done it for the money. Most people that know anything about uh -huh. publishing will know you don't make money in book sales. It's, it's more for... It's just my life's work, and, mm -hmm. and you know I, I see it in a way where I'm currently reading books by Marcus Aurelius and Seneca, two thousand yeah. years old. So maybe right. someone's going to read this ridiculous book in two thousand years old. So it'll hopefully last forever. So great. There you go. All right. So I want to say thank you everyone for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, if you like more videos like this, leave a comment down below, and I want you to subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and hit like if you do like. And no matter what, leave a comment so I can read this and get some good feedback from you. So until next time, remember, you cannot always do your best. You must do what's required.